electronic music is relatively new to many listeners, it actually has a history spanning more than 20 years. In 1951, the electronic music school in Cologne, Germany, used oscillators to create single notes and overdubbing and splicing to create musical compositions. In the 1960s, multi-track recording was perfected and musical instruments known as synthesizers were brought into common use. The 1970s brought improved small synthesizers such as those you see here. The purpose of this program is to present the basics of synthetic music to show how electronic musical sounds are actually produced and later to show how they are used. A synthesizer is a musical instrument that creates sounds electronically. Sounds are made by changes in air pressure. Synthesizers use the same principle as a common public address system whose loudspeaker is made to change air pressure in the same manner of the speaker's voice into the microphone. All synthesizers have sound generators which produce sound, sound modifiers which alter the sound, and sound controllers which turn the sound sources and modifiers on and off. Here are the sound sources. Noise is a random sound which has no shape and no pitch. This electronic noise is similar to escaping steam, running water, or wind. The oscillator is another sound source. Basically, it is an electrical tone generator whose signal can be produced and varied by voltage control. Let's listen to another variable oscillator. These slow oscillations are moving below our perception of pitch. As they are speeded up, we begin to discern pitch. Our perception of pitch starts at about 20 cycles per second, or when the oscillator clicks 20 times per second. As the oscillations continue to increase speed, the pitch goes higher. The speed of these clicks is called oscillator frequency. So the faster the clicks, the higher the pitch, the higher the frequency. The 440 and A440, used as a pitch reference on a piano, refers to the frequency of that note. The oscillator sound source can also produce sounds that are different in wave shape. Here is a sawtooth wave. A triangle wave. a square wave. And finally, a pulse wave. The differences in sound quality are due to differences in harmonic content. Here is a sine or pure wave form. The next major part of a synthesizer is the sound modifier. One type of modifier is the filter. A filter simply holds back certain frequencies while allowing others to pass. You may remove the high frequencies from a signal Or you may remove the low frequencies. Or you may remo remove both high and low frequencies. Filters are described according to the frequencies which are passed. Thus we have low pass filters, high pass filters, and band pass filters. So called because they remove both high and low frequencies and pass a band of those frequencies in the middle.
the filtering of a noise produces a particularly interesting effect. The third major part of the synthesizer is the controller. This controls the time duration of any sound event. The simplest controller is the keyboard itself. The sound begins when the key is pressed and ends when it is released. Another important controller is the envelope generator. The envelope generator is divided into four sections, one which controls attack, decay, sustain, and release. Using noise as the sound source and allowing this envelope generator to open and close the filter, here we have set a very fast attack. Here is a slow attack. Notice that my hand is still on the keyboard and the sound is not coming forth. This is because I have given no decay, sustain, or release time. Here is a slower attack. And the slowest. The initial settling of the tone after the attack is called a decay. Here is a moderately slow attack followed by that decay. Here is a very fast attack followed by the same decay. My hand is still on the keyboard and the sound is not sustaining. To make it sustain, we raise the sustain slider and leave the hand on the keyboard. We still can vary the attack time and have sustain. When I remove my hand from the keyboard, the tone stops unless I raise the release slider. Now, when I remove my hand from the keyboard, the tone will continue to sound and gradually die off. The combinations of possibilities with these sliders on the envelope generator allow you to make various kinds of sound effects such as these. The synthesis uses sound sources, modifiers, and controllers to create sound. As an example, to synthesize the sound of an electric bass, he begins with a raw sound from an oscillator, puts it into the correct pitch range, gives it the proper timbre by using the filter and control, the appropriate attack, decay, sustain, and release are set and the bass is synthesized. The various elements of a composition may be assembled onto audio tape. Therefore, scores for electronic music are often performed in the recording studio rather than before an audience. This allows the composer more control of his sounds. He may use techniques of recording such as the audio tape loop or reversal of the tape flow so that the music is played backwards. First, we hear a passage played normally. And now we hear the same passage played in reverse. Once the elements of the finished composition are on tape, they are integrated using what is called the dubbing process. For example, if we wanted to put together a simple electronic music score consisting of only two tracks, here's how we would go about it. We would start with a two-track tape recorder. You can see here with a two-track tape recorder, separate channels of information can be recorded on the same tape. 
Other more complicated recorders record 16 or more channels on the same tape, which allow you to lay down, let's say, 16 tracks of a composition. For our purposes of demonstration, with a two-track tape recorder, here's what you would do. You would record the first part of your two-part composition on track A, for example, rewind the tape, and while listening to the first track, record the second part onto track B. When both tracks are played back simultaneously, you have a two-part composition, and this is the way it might sound. First, with the single track, like this. And second, with two tracks like this. Practically, of course, electronic music is usually made up of many, many tracks in which the synthesis will use the sounds of many and varied instruments. Synthesis might use a synthesizer such as this. Inside this particular instrument, which is called the Pro Soloist, we have tabs marked with the instrument names. Bassoon, for example. On the inside, there is a memory circuit that says, I need this kind of waveform, I need this much attack, decay, sustain, release, and I need this much of the filter. Then, simply by playing on the keyboard, these sounds will come out, such as the bassoon, the clarinet, the flute, the tuba, the French horn, the trumpet, even with a mute. The violin with a tiny bit of slide or portamento. There are a series of comic effects that are often used by synthesists for fun and for creative composition. Here is one which is called the comic wow. Another called the pulsar. One called the nose. Sometimes the size of the keyboard might fool you into thinking that it has a limited range. By taking another comic effect, such as the Telstar, I can show you that one key can be moved up to the normal position or down, giving me a full range of tone. The buzz bassoon is another commonly used comic effect. To play expressively on an instrument such as this, 
There are provided touch sensor effects. These mean that to initiate vibrato, volume, brilliance, growl, wow, or a pitch bend, you merely press into the keyboard to initiate your effect. Here is a pitch bend. Notice how my right hand sinks into the keyboard slightly to make the effect come up. I can initiate the vibrato the same way. Or a wow. Or a growl. Or, of course, I can combine them. What we have given is a very basic introduction to synthesizer theory, and we have dealt only with one type of machine. Nevertheless, the electronic synthesizer can create and control all the variables of musical sound, and thus the possibilities are infinite. Here is a tone which is repeating, and if I feed it into a special circuit called the sample and hold, along with noise, which we saw earlier, a random selection of musical tones will begin to sound. We have a lot of control over this, too. We can control the speed. We can also control the direction of the tones so that it no longer is random. All we have to do is take the noise element out and substitute a low frequency waveform. That is, a waveform which you can't hear, but it is oscillating very slowly, as we listened to before. Here you can hear a repeating pattern. And we can change that repetition. We don't have to use a musical tone in the sample and hold. We can also use noise. And if we use the envelope generator to shorten noise, we can make various kinds of syncopation. Let's look at something else that the synthesizer can do. The keyboard normally, traditionally, on a piano or an organ, has to stay tuned the way you have it tuned in the beginning or the way it comes from the factory. Not so on a synthesizer. It's possible to take the keyboard and either shrink it or expand it in terms of the keys and the differences between them. Here's an example of that. If I take the filter and make it open so fast that it resonates very, very, very quickly, it becomes another oscillator. I can actually play on it as though it were a musical producing oscillator. There is your traditional keyboard. What I'd like to do now is widen the keyboard so that the distance between the keys is smaller. Here we have quarter tones. Or we can widen the keyboard so much that the difference from the bottom to the top of the keyboard is a very, very small interval, even smaller. And playing each key, the tone goes down and the pitch goes down microtonally, very small parts. There are an array of musical effects that can also be pushed into the synthesizer very easily, just knowing that you have so many variations. Here on one of the machines we were using earlier, the OP2600 has the capability of producing an electric bass sound, as I have it set up here.
I can initiate the sound of strings. Or I can do the both. If I initiate both and would like to separate them only with my hand, a very fast attack on the keyboard will give me only the bass. This is because the envelope generator is set with a fast attack and a quick decay. The strings, which are set with a slow attack, need more time to get started. If my hand comes off of the keyboard before the slow attack begins, I have no strings. But if I play smoothly and allow that second slow attack to start, the strings then enter. I can also change the combination of these settings so that the strings have the very short attack, like this. I can combine that short string attack with the long string attack. I can come back to my bass and have another variance. I can bend the pitch by turning one knob, the knob over here to the far left, and that will allow me to act as though if I were playing bass, I were actually bending the string of the instrument. Or I can make a portamento which allows me to slide. It remembers the note that I played last and lets me slide all the way up to the one that I go to next. The same on any of the string sounds. To combine some of these effects allows you to make a lot of music using just a minimum of fingers and a minimum of settings. That's what we'll do now.
Mr. Pickett appeared courtesy of ARP Instruments, Incorporated. This has been a production of the Ohio University Telecommunications Center.